Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a fusion breakthrough. This was, for me, a pretty exciting day. And I just happened to have a wonderful nerd friend who, like me, got real excited. But by the time we stopped talking about it, it feel, felt like we were going into conspiracies with aliens. And anyway, I'm going to read an article. I'll put the links in the description. I usually read it word for word, but I might throw in my two cents here and there. Again, this is about the nuclear fusion breakthrough. This article is by Ella Nilsson from the, it says CNN, but I think it's from the Guardian uh, website. In any case, I'll put the link in the description. So, I'll begin. U.S. Department of Energy officials announced a history-making accomplishment in nuclear fusion Tuesday for the first time. U.S. scientists produce more energy from fusion than the laser energy they use to power the experiment. So, more energy out than was put in. You know, with my PhD. <laughs> I'll continue. A so-called, quote, net energy gain is a major milestone in a decades-long attempt to source clean, limitless energy from nuclear fusion. The reaction that happens when two or more atoms are fused together. The experiment put in 2.05 megajoules of energy to the target and resulted in 3.15 megajoules of fusion energy output, generating more than 50% more energy than was put in. It is the first time an experiment resulted in a meaningful gain of energy. Now, I'm not, you know, we know what a math whiz I am. So, it might be wrong. Like I said, I had a discussion with my friend, and we got really super excited and nerded out, but then started... Uh, you know, like a, a little bit of time reading things, you start. It's a breakthrough, yes, but we just were. I was ready to run outside naked and scream and stuff. It's a long story. Anyway, this monumental scientific breakthrough is a milestone for the future of clean energy, said Democratic U.S. Senator Alex Padilla of California in a statement. The breakthrough was made by a team of scientists at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. National Ignition Facility in California on December 5th. A facility the size of a sports stadium and equipped with 192 lasers. I saw the picture, it's pretty crazy. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm on Tuesday called the breakthrough a milestone. Quote, Ignition allows us to replicate, for the first time, certain conditions that are only found in the stars and sun. Grum, Granholm, <laughs> Granholm said, This milestone moves us one significant step closer to the possibility of zero carbon, abundant fusion energy powering our society. Granholm said, Scientists at Livermore and other national labs do work that will help the U.S. move quickly towards clean energy and maintain a nuclear deterrent without nuclear testing. Quote, this is what it looks like for America to lead, and we're just getting started, Granholm said. I fucking hate that name. Fuck's sake. And by the way, it fucking annoys me about the America shit, but okay, I don't know why. I mean, yeah, you know, I'll pat myself on the back, I'm an American, I guess. Anyway, I'll continue. If we can advance fusion energy, we could use it to produce clean electricity, transportation fuels, power, heavy industry, and so much more. Oh, boy. Arati Prabhakar, director of the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, Jesus fucking Christ, spoke about how, as a young scientist early in her career, she spent three months at Lawrence Livermore 
working on its nuclear fusion project. Lawrence Livermore, Grand I mean, God, I must be really stoned today. Holy shit. This is the Deadly Dixons channel, okay? But this is fucking ridiculous. Prabhaka reflected on the generations of scientists who got to today's achievement with nuclear fusion. Quote, it took not just one generation, but generations of people pursuing this goal, she said. It's a century since we figured out it was fusion that was going on in our sun and all other stars. In that century, it took so many different kinds of advances that ultimately came together to the point that we could replicate that fusion activity in a laboratory. Why a net gain in energy matters. We are still a very long way from having nuclear fusion power the electric grid. Experts caution, well, the U.S. project, while groundbreaking, only produced enough energy to boil about 2.5 gallons of water. Tony Woolstone, a, f a fusion expert from the engineering department at the University of Cambridge, told CNN. That may not seem like much, but the experiment is still hugely significant because scientists de demonstrated that they can create more energy than they started with. And that's the big deal. While there are many more steps until this can be commercially viable, that is a major hurdle to cross with nuclear fusion, experts say. <sighs> Lawrence Livermore's National Laboratory Director, Kim Boodil, Boodil, on Tuesday called her lab's breakthrough a fundamental building block to eventually realizing nuclear fusion powering electricity. She estimated it will take a few decades more work before it is ready for commercial use. A few decades. I don't know how much fucking time I got left. Alright? Fuck. I know, I always say that in my podcast. I'd rather be honest. You know, I'll be fucking, I'll be 98. Yeah, fuck out of here. Alright. I think it's moving into the foreground and probably with concert, uh, concerted effort and investment. A few decades of research on the underlying technologies could put us in a position to build a power plant. Boodle told reporters. With real investment and real focus, that time scale can move closer. Oh, you see, they're reassuring me. Oh, thank you. That's, that's nice. I feel better. Past fusion experiments, including the one in the United Kingdom, have generated more energy, but have not had nearly uh, as big of an energy gain. For instance, earlier this year, UK scientists generated a record setting 59 megajoules of energy about 20 times as much as a U.S.-based project. Even so, the U.K. project only showed an energy gain of less than one megajoule. Okay. Neither the U.S. nor U.K.-based projects have the hardware and steps in place to convert fusion neutrons to electricity. Ann White, head of MIT's Department of Nuclear Science and Engineering, told CNN, Boodle said both European fusion projects that run on magnets and the U.S. laser-based system can work alongside each other to push advancements in fusion forward. Granholm added the federal government welcomes private investment in fusion as well. Hmm. Oh, boy. All right. Well, at least Trump's doing his fucking baseball cards. Maybe Elon Musk fucking... Boodle stressed that there are many more steps to take in the coming decades until nuclear fusion power can turn our lights on and heat our water. Quote, I don't want to give you a sense that we're going to plug the National Ignition Facility into the grid. That's not how it works, he said. But Rulestone pointed out that big ambitions nuclear energy projects must start somewhere. In 1942, scientists in Chicago ran the first fission nuclear reactor for just five minutes in its first run. Fifteen years later, the first U.S.-based nuclear power plant went online in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? All right. All right. And it says the CNN wire, so somehow this is a CNN-type report. It might be on a different website. But anyway, there you have it. I am super excited. Like I said, I wanted to run Scream. I was, I was, this is like, for me, you know, the beginning of Star Trek, you know. <laughs> 
some nerd fantasy of, you know, some utopia, but this is, this is stuff that really can propel us forward. And who knows, maybe there's a, un, a united uh, cause here. Can we all get together? Like, like I said, I didn't, I was too happy with the America thing. I guess I, I, I do, I do appreciate it. But if this is a world thing, working alongside UK, let's move this up more. You know, we could finally solve a lot of problems. And I just think this is, in a way, mind blowing. I'm really trying to contain myself. Well, these fucking stone and pronouncing these names doesn't help. But we have nuclear fusion in an accomplished task here. And by the way, the article has lots of links. Uh, lots of letters are highlighted or colored differently, and you'll be able to go to other links from there. But it looks like it's not something I should run in, out and scream about, but this is, in my opinion, an incredible breakthrough. With the promise of like free, clean energy in a real sustainable way. And when you watch the um, there are little videos out now. You could probably look on YouTube, but searching maybe Fusion Breakthrough 22, you'll find like you know, they'll have press conferences and things like that. You can almost sense the excitement. The because I think a lot of these things happen and they they go nuts and then it they look at the math and they do the test and uh oh, you know, it, it wasn't as. Ex- Exciting as we thought it would be. This might fall in the middle, but definitely leaning towards potential breakthroughs that we could see in the next coming decades. And I find that fascinating. You know, I just did the podcast on Awakening the Spine. Who knows what's next, but I think this is a great time. I'm so grateful sometimes that I, you know, I wake up, I was born in you know, United States, I'm in New York, uh, it's just, as far as I know, healthy, and I just wish some of, though, you know, those of us that left us on this journey were still here to see some of these things, because some of them would be real nerds, but I get to geek out with my friends, and this is a, almost astounding, I'm really containing myself in a way, because I want to keep blabbing, but you know, when you read an article, I don't want to do like a 40 fucking minute thing about me gushing over, you know, the, the nerd, the state of nerdism, but the way they described it, you watch the press conference, the way they described, the way they did the test, and apparently, you know, they have a cylinder, and they hit it with lasers, and from the gist of the article, the net gain thing is, you put energy in, and you're getting out more. And this has been, I think, um, put in the news once. There was a big thing about we had a success or a big breakthrough. Not the UK one. The UK one was just uh, a test that they didn't see much gains. But there was one where it was like, we've done it. I can't remember when it was. And I think I was like, it was in my 20s or 30s maybe. But I got home. My friend had a text, you know. We went, we went crazy a little bit, and we were talking, and man, like I said, science for me just, you know, it gives me that spiritual feeling uh, that people might talk about, you know, being awed by this. And you look at the device, how they shot the lasers in, it's just freaky, because I think the thumb, uh, thing I use for my image is actually the type of thing, whatever it is. And it's got this psychedelic look like, you know, you can picture a guy in the center, you know, doing the yoga pose or something. I'm just floored in a way, but like my friend, we got, uh, we settled down and um, just awaiting, it was a weird moment because you get so excited and then you want to see the well, for me, I want to see some of my personal scientists that I trust. I forgot her name. Sabine Hassenfelder or something like that. She's like my favorite. 
um, on YouTube. I hope I don't know if I said the name right. But now I'm just waiting because I don't no, look. You might be enjoyable or something, but Neil deGrasse Tyson is not my guy to go to. Or Bill Nye, the fucking science guy. <laughs> I saw a meme that Ivan Drago. Like, yeah, I know. It sucks that I don't know his fucking name, right? Dolph Lundgren has more PhDs than Bill Nye, the science guy. Like, Bill Nye has like a fucking, like a, he was working in a garage at school or something. I mean, I love him for the, him and what, you know, I love what they do. And they connect to the youth. You know, we don't have Carl Sagan or Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I don't know if Mr. Rogers, the sweater and the fucking slippers. In any case, I am excited. A breakthrough in science like this. I think it's monumental in a way. Trying to curb my excitement. And what I could possibly see. But if they talk in a couple of decades. And with working alongside and pushing advancements. It could be quicker. I mean yeah I can't see like everybody having a personal. Little portable fucking fusion generator. But maybe you could see like certain parts of areas that really get hard hit because i'm wondering if this type of technology is not limited in certain factors where our nuclear processing plants are and and what they could do and you know what happens in storms and things like that but even if it's like in the next decade or so we get you know certain states that have certain power and we can alleviate some of the pressure i think this is going to be great and who knows how what else is a branch into? I mean, you know, lightsabers, Star Trek. Am I getting in a starship one day? And not fucking Elon Musk's death machine, that death rocket fucking nonsense. By the way, that thing looks fake when it comes down, right? You know, all the flat earthers are probably going nuts. Anyway, this was the nuclear fusion breakthrough. Uh, I guess 2022. As I said, the article, the link to the article will be in my description. I am super excited. More energy out than we put in is the gist of it. And in nuclear fusion, that's a huge accomplishment or a milestone, as this says. I look forward to hearing from you. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.